a reta final deste dia cheio para mais uh, uma partilha e teremos o Paco Estrada, Lean Sensei e TPF Expert, que tem mais de 15 anos de experiência no apoio à implementação de metodologias Lean em inúmeras áreas. Juntamente com o Sensei Toyota, tem ajudado nestas jornadas empresas do ramo industrial nas áreas farmacêutica, do aço, cerveja, equipamento médico, na área de serviços e banca, pela América Latina, Estados Unidos e Europa. Paco é formado em Design, com pós-graduação em Engenharia da Qualidade e Gestão de Projeto e certificado em Seis Sigma e Lean Sigma. Hoje vai-nos dar a conhecer o caso da Lotaria do Arizona, uma jornada Lean no Governo Estadual. Teremos também connosco Marie Pia Inhas, Presidente do Instituto Lean France, é altamente especializada a gerir grandes operações na indústria de serviços. Começou a sua carreira na Companhia Francesa Caminhos Ferro, 12 anos depois ficou em carregue da unidade de negócio na Atos Origin, gerindo 2.800 pessoas distribuídas por oito call centers. Esteve inclusivamente responsável pelo lançamento por um dos bancos online franceses. Subsequentemente, desenhou e aplicou o primeiro programa Lean no BNP Paribas. Desde então, na Opera Partners, a empresa que fundou em 2007, concebeu e aplicou programas de gestão Lean para outras grandes companhias europeias, envolvendo mais de 5 mil pessoas. É também autora do primeiro livro em francês sobre a prática da gestão Lean em Haiti e vem dar-nos a conhecer 10 histórias relacionadas com a transformação Lean digital. Thank you. Hello. Welcome. Welcome everyone. What is it? Right. Well. Uh, I need some help. How do I change the slides? This one, so, okay. and I have to push where? Here? Yeah, I think it's... Uh, okay. Then we have to wait. Okay. So I would like to start with value. Uh, anytime you speak of digital, you think of technology, but when you start from the lean point of view, the first point, the main point, is about value. How do you create value? Which are your customers? What are you, they looking at? And I'm not telling you um, a, a course about lean and value. I just want to tell you some stories. So let's start for, with value. I chose as a first presentation the value from Intuit. I don't know if you know who is Intuit. But Intuit is a very, very, very old company in the technology of IT. Very old because they started in 1983. At the same time, we, Microsoft was created and Apple was launched. So something really new. And they decided to offer something that helped people manage their budget. So it was the very beginning of IT, and they are still alive. And it's not so frequent. So I have lots of respect for Intuit. They have 50 million users. They have $5 billion dollars of revenue, so it's quite a large, well-established company, and they are working for personal finance, self-entrepreneur, and small businesses. They have something very specific to find what is value, and it's something lean at the root. It's Genshi Genbutsu. So here you have one user, one client of um, Intuit, and this client is observed by three people. And this is something very specific to Intuit, and nobody knows how to do that. So I let you listen to what the CEO of Intuit is telling. So his name is CEO Brad Smith, and he was the creator of uh, Intuit. And he's still managing behaviors. Intuit. Trust observable behaviors, which you can observe and measure, either measure through what happens on the web, or you can measure by observing it with your own eyes. The tendency, though, when you take 
people who haven't been trained and send them out to meet with customers is they go out and interview customers. Well, you've just invented the world's most expensive way to do a customer interview. If you're going to interview them, call them on the phone or send them a survey. Don't do a follow me home. A follow me home's right there so you can see with your eyes. So shut up. Say nothing. Watch for an hour or two or three. Then you can ask them about what you saw, and then you're asking about behaviors. That's still an interview, not the most reliable, but it'll be better because you're probing about specific behaviors you saw. So I'd say that's the second thing that we've worked to reinstill um, is trust behaviors and behavioral data, not attitudes or words. So did you get the point? The point is you do your go and see, you ask your customer, can I sit with you when you are, I don't know, installing the product, using the product, doing something with the product I created for you. And you don't ask him what he's expecting for, you don't ask him what he would like, you don't ask him to tell you what he is doing with the product, you just observe. And observing, learning to see is something really important in Lean. It's a way to understand your customer, it's a way to see where are his waste and not what you are just imagining, and it's also a way to identify where lies the value you are not delivering at the moment. And maybe it's a place for innovation. And this is something really important in the digital world. Where do you want a new feature, something new in terms of value? And this is a story of Intuit. And with that, they came from the individual entrepreneur, individual person to individual a very large software development company. So this was the story of Intuit. But maybe you are as I am. I'm not always really impressed with what the digital uh, companies are offering. I find the quality not so good. And I would like to tell you the story of Trainline. I don't know if you're using Trainline. They are selling ticket trains to, um, from two and 50 different companies, ticket trains and bus trains. It's quite a new company. And you just take your phone and you just say, I want to go from Barcelona to uh, Madrid. And then you say which day, and then you've got your ticket. Of course, you pay your ticket. It's something really convenient. And I use it when I ask the elevator. And when I'm done, I have my ticket train. So. Um, it's a brilliant story. You can use it by phone, you can, yes, by phone mainly. And what it, they said is support, incident, claims is something bearable for the customers. And they say there, there is a story. The story is you purchase something and then it's not working as it should do, and then you are calling the call centers or you send a mail or you chat with a robot, and then nothing happened. And they say, please send a new information, tell it again, we forgot to send you back the information, and you are in the maze. And it's really, really hard. And they say, no, we will not, as a new, young, digital, modern company, we will not accept that. We will not accept that any time we have one more customer, we have the need for one more support to support this customer. We will change something on the model. And they said we started with support-driven development. So as you see, they are not looking at all for innovative solution. They are just looking for, if I have a question on the support, how can I answer the question, of course, but then make it never happen again. Support-driven development. So this is Jonathan Lefebvre. He was in charge of the support um, and the service cl customer of, um, of Trendline. And he says the best support is no support. And I remember a book about Amazon saying the best service is no service. So the question is not, I will not provide support or service to my customer. The question is, how can I handle so much quality that my customer will never again call me? or ask me for something. Our job is to think about how to work less, okay, not how to unsatisfy our customer. And this is something from the digital world to uh, their customers. And this is something that just check when you are buying something with a delivery, when you are using IT tools in your company, do you think that there is this support-driven development in order that you don't have waste? when using this product or buying this service. 
So this is support. But if you can go one step deeper, so this is just to show you that when you are looking at what happened to train line, they really managed to destroy the need for support. And um, in this support um, mindset, this su no support is the best support. In this support mindset, you've got, as I told you, Amazon, but I don't know if in your company you're using Trello. Trello is a very, very light workflow, very useful to, to parallelize, to share um, development, IT development between teams, for example. And in Trello, they have 30 million users and five people working at support. So when you aim at quality, you gain quality. Support is not enough. The real question, the very first basic question is reliability. If you have a very nice digital application and when you try to use it, it's not working, the question of having a very nice new feature on your digital application has no, no sense at all. So what can you do about reliability? And this is also a question for the, the leaders of the, the digital companies. Do you know what are the five nine? It's a way to challenge the technological uh, data center providers like uh, uh, Amazon Web Services, for example. With one nine, you have 90%, between 90% and 98% of reliability. With two nines, you have between 99% and 99.8% of reliability. With three nine, and etc. And tomorrow you will want to drive a car, an automatic car. So we, you will want not to drive your car, but being drive, driven by your car. And at which level of reliability will you accept not to drive the car? 19 means, for example, in one hour of, of driving, six minutes of non-reliability. I will not put my kids, my mother-in-law, my families in the car and be doing six minutes in one hour of drive, having no computer working in the car. <laughs> and so you say, okay, 99.9%, .9%, maybe four nights, I will accept, means, I don't know, something like six, six, six milliseconds uh, within an hour. So this question of reliability is something that the digital native companies manage to share. But what can you do when you're not digital native? This is a story of a bank called Fortis. Fortis is a very large bank in Belgium, and they decided to reduce the bugs uh, in their what they call in the banks their flow, their money transfer activity. And you know that the job of the bank is to have one euro there and be able to send the euro here and tell anybody minus one euro, plus one euro. This is the basic activity of the bank before card management or credit or anything else. Just accounting between accounts. Between accounts. And um, they decided that they had too many, really too many incidents. And they m made the decision to improve when they had a 1.3 billion euros incident. And the incident was this one. They sent twice the money transfer money, the money transfer file at the end of the month. And it was 1.3 billion euros. And they saw nothing. They didn't identify the mistake. And after that, three days later, another European bank called and said, maybe you have a problem because twice my customer gets the money. So they identify the money and they say, OK, we stop that. We want now to have a reliable system. And what they did was first, and I think it's interesting, interesting because first they wanted the executive to accept the idea of improvement. So the guy in charge of that, Kenneth Trick, had said, OK, I want a weekly meeting on operational quality. That's the way he calls that. I want a dedicated budget. I want some money to do that. And I want to have some banking monitoring because we cannot, again, one day, 
lost 1.3 billion euros. Of course, they didn't lose that. They, are, they, they have ways between banks to regulate this kind of mistake, but however, the risk was too high. And then there was the operational decision, and the operational decision was lean and agile. So it was agile because the bank was agile, and it was lean because they wanted results. And what they did was, first goal was, when there is an incident, we close the incident. And it's not so easy in an IT department to close incident at the speed where the incidents happen. Some, some incidents may have more than one year, two years, three years before being closed. So they decided to be at the tact of the incident. <coughs> Doing that, they, they did that the lean way, so with a, a pool system, and uh, they improved the quality inside the process, so they got more time to do something as that just closing incident. And they decided to do what they call a cold, cold. The first one was a warm, this one is a cold, a closing of incident. They decided to go to the root cause and close the incident. And they did that with an um, A3 system, A3 thinking system to address any cause they could find creating incident. And really it worked. Before Lean, they had one to two incidents per day, impacting the customers. Because sometimes you can have incident impacting yourself, but with no impact on customer. I can give you an example. An incident solved before 5 p.m. will not impact the customer. Then after one Lean of deployments, they came from one or two per day to one or two per month, which is really better. And then year two, they discovered that they went from one or two per month to one or two per year. So you see the capability of improvement when you watch at your non-reliability, at your IT incidents. And this is something that helps them compete with digital native. So this was the point about creating value. So Lean in Digital, first, it's not about IT tools, IT mindsets, IT methods. It's about creating value with your IT system. Real value for real customer. Not something, not something saying, I will send you my bureaucracy and you will have difficulties to log in and so on. And I started from the value and then the usability with the support and then the incident with the, avail uh, the availability, sorry. But in reality, the Lean Mindset says, first, restore a good situation. So you should fr start from your availability. How can you believe that your CEO, your customers, will believe that you will deliver such great new value if your availability, reliability, is not enough? So first, start with av availability, and this is, let's say, complaint-driven development, then usability, which is support-driven development, and then the last one, which is value-driven development. This being done, you know now what kind of value or reparation of value you want to, to give, to provide to your customer, and the question is, how do you create that? And the answer is, you need to apply to rely on the quality and flow pillars of Lean. I would like to show you what it means for a company called Next. Do you know Next? Nobody knows Next. It was really a, a, a short time living company. It's, it lived, I would say, two or three years. And um, the entrepreneur who created Next says, quality and Japanese quality should be a driver for all of us in technology. It was the end of the 80s. And this is how he says that. Quality in their marketing are the Japanese. You never see them using quality in their marketing. It's only the American companies that do. And yet, if you ask people on the street which products have the best reputation for quality, they will tell you the Japanese products. Now, why is that? How could that be? The answer is because customers don't form their opinions on quality from marketing. 
They don't form their opinions on quality from who won the, uh, the Deming Award or who won the Baldrige Award. They form their opinions on quality from their own experience with the products or the services. And so one can spend enormous amounts of money on quality. One can win every quality award there is, and yet if your products don't live up to it, customers will not keep that opinion for long in their minds. And so I think where we have to start is with our products and our services, not with our marketing department. And we need to get back to the basics and go improve our products and services. Now again, quality isn't just the product or the service, it's having the right product, you know, knowing where the market's going and having the most innovative products is just as much a part of quality as the quality of the construction of the product when you have it. And I think what we're seeing is the quality leaders of today have integrated that quality technology well beyond their manufacturing, now going well into their sales and marketing and out as far as they can to touch the customer and trying to, to create super efficient processes back from the customer all the way through to the delivery of the end product so that they can have the most innovative products, understand the customer needs fastest, et cetera, et cetera. So Steve Jobs was my uh, special guest today for you, and um, he was the creator of Next. I don't know if you remember that he created Apple, and then he was fired because there were better managers than, uh, than him. So he had some money, lots of time, nothing to do, and he decided to create his next computer, which was really a next computer. I had the chance to, to work on it, to use it, and it was incredible. Nothing to do with Macintosh. And uh, as you know, as you, you now know, he was inspired by Japanese quality, which is exactly what we heard all the day today about building built in quality inside the technology. And it's, it's something very important for him. He was also one of the main stockholders of um, Pixar. Pixar is uh, the company who created uh, uh, lots of um, films for children, such as um, uh, Toy Story, for example. And in uh, Toy Story, the company of Toy Story, they decided that they needed three pillars to be Pixar and have the success of Pixar. The first one was being able to tell really nice stories. The second one was being able to transform these stories in a film. And the third one was being able to manage the company in a great way. And they decided to use the Toyota, the Toyota way to do that. So Steve Jobs with Pixar and with Next had and bended this quality that the Japanese company were able to, to, to deploy. So quality first. Quality first. So <laughs> difficult. And now this is a difficult side of uh, my presentation because understanding value is not so easy, but we are all using digital, so we have an idea about what is value. But understanding how you build something with IT is something much more difficult. So something you can do quite easily is a Gemba. And this is just a small demand so you have somebody asking for something, somebody analyzes this question from a technical point of view, somebody or the same person developing that, then testing, and then delivering for usage. You know, four steps. This is perfectly visible that you have four steps. And it's a smooth product, a process. And in reality, when you walk your process, when you take one demand, closed, finished, available for the users, and you look at the life of the demand, it's a full mess. And any time I was showing things like that to Dan Jones, he was, he was telling me, yes, I know the same in the industry. OK, so good. <laughs> IT is not the only place where there can be a great mess, but that's life. When you watch at the way people are working in IT, it's not a question of being agile or not being agile, uh, being uh, test-driven development or not. Or, or it's not a question of process in IT. It's not a question of the way you are building it. It's just a question of the way you are handling your process. Fighting against viability. Fighting against non-quality. And this is why any time you are asking for something to IT, they say, you will get it in two years. Everything is like that. Another example. 
this is BSAM. BSAM is uh, B for business intelligence and uh, SAM for uh, asset management, software for asset management. And um, asset management, you, you have funds and you, uh, you buy and sell stocks. And the question is, who is the best manager of the asset? And it's difficult because you cannot compare buying stocks on China and the United States. But even inside, let's say, United States, you can have different strategies. And you need to be very precise in terms of strategies to identify who is the best asset manager. So the people doing this uh, software, it's a, sof a software editor, the people doing the, this software are, are mathematicians and they are software developers, and they are really, really great. Uh, they started to do what they called extreme programming in 2005, and it was the most modern method at that time. And they decided to do to Scrum to 2010, and they were nearly the first to do that. So they are really good at that. However, they had a problem, which for an editor is a difficult problem. None of their customers wanted to be, again, a beta tester. Because when you had a version of the BSAM solution, it was working, and any time you were changing, it was a complete mess. And it's difficult to sell new version if you don't have beta testers, and if you don't sell new version, your company will just close. So they decided to do lean. And they decided to do lean in one first direction, restore confidence with their clients. And you don't have so many asset managers worldwide, very large bank. So if you lose the confidence of one, you are losing part of your market share. So they decided to work on quality. And you see, it worked. And they also decided to work on speed to the go-live version, what they call the go-live version, when they can sell the new version to new customer. But in fact, they made things on this side of speed, but what helped them succeed in terms of speed was the way they handled quality. So you see it's a three years program, however it worked. To do that, and again I apologize, you now need to have expert people doing lean with expert people doing IT or maybe just expert people doing IT and understanding what is lean, of course. But this is exactly the kind of Kaizen they are doing. So if you don't understand each word, each concept of that, it's really hard to understand how they built software, and it's really hard to work together to improve, challenge, and do the Kaizen. So just an example. But however, if you want to improve, if you want to go to this direction of digital excellence for your IT department, software department, R&D department, this is something you have to do. This is another company, and it's called Teodo. I love Teodo. It was created in uh, 2007, started very, very slowly with uh, some digital proposal. And then in 2010, they decided to do lean. So why do I love Teodo? Because they are really young, 25 people. They are increasing in terms of um, turnover at one of the best rate in Europe. There are now 300 people. They are in uh, French, UK, and the uh, United States. And they decided to do lean everywhere. Just an example, they decided to recruit lots of people, and then they calculated their tag time. And the tag time was one new employee every 1.5 days. See? quite a huge recruitment rate. And they decided to do lean to, 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 to succeed in this uh, tag time. But they also are working a lot of le on lean on the technical side of their work. And again, this is what is creating lots of pleasure at work, doing this kind of Kaizen, looking for three minutes max per ticket to have a clean environment. I don't know if you know what is a clean environment, but I don't or what is continuous integration 
functional test, and so on. So the m one of the main difficulty in doing lean in digital is to speak with these people, having this concept, challenging their techniques in order to find best ways to work. But it's always possible. Why is it done this way? The answer is because that's the way we do it here, or because that's the way it's always been done. And in my opinion, the largest contribution of much of this quality thinking is to approach these ways of doing things, these processes, at, at scientifically, where there is a theory behind why we do them. There is a description of what we do, and most importantly, there is an opportunity to always question what we do. And this is a radically different approach to business processes than the traditional one, because it's always done this way. And that single shift is everything, in my opinion, because it, it, in that shift is a tremendous optimistic point of view about the people that work in a company. It says these people are very smart. They're not, they're not pawns. They're very smart. And if given the opportunity to change and improve, they will. They will improve the processes if there's, if there's a mechanism for it. And um, that, that optimistic humanism uh, I find very appealing. And I think we have countless examples uh, that it works. So after value, after the two pillars of Lean, I would like to show you something which comes di directly from the Lean world, which was uh, presented to the Lean IT community uh, some years ago, and uh, which was really, really helpful. So again, a place where Lean helps or to succeed in IT. So this is visual management. Often I'm reading text saying, yes, you know, doing lean in manufacturing is so easy because you can see things. And doing lean in services or in IT or in telecommunication is much more difficult because you just see people sitting at the table with a computer and doing that. And maybe it's not when they are not typing that they are modelizing the best what they will do later. So they are just doing that and you don't know if they are sleeping or thinking. So how can you visualize what's happening in? And some years ago, I had the chance to go to the Lean Summit in the uh, UK and uh, to meet with uh, Takashi Tanaka, who was the expert of Obeya. So an Obeya, do you know what is an Obeya? We are going to lean engineering, so how can we create best, better product? So Anobeya is a, a room where, is, where you have, let's say, more or less seven different informations. What do you want to succeed? What is the product you are creating? What are the customers' expectations? What is your uh, schedules, your metrics, your short-term decision to, to be taken? and uh, more or less that's it. So it's a place where you have a chief engineer with different people trying to create a new car, for example, a Prius, the first Lexus, a Corolla, and you have the chief engineer with the main contributors. They enter to this room, they watch the visual management, and they ask questions on the place where they need to understand better or they tell a story and the place where they have a difficulty they would like to share. And the story says that for Lexus, for Prius and for Cola, this was a way to divide by more than two the lead time between the decision to create the product and the car on the road. 1.5 years versus three to four. So it was a competitive, and it's still a competitive advantage for Toyota. And we were working with people in charge of very large IT uh, projects and application development, and they said, if it's working for the manufacturing, maybe we could try. And they decided, so now it's like that, they decided to have exactly the same obeya. 
not the same design, you know, because when you come from an agile world, you, you like to draw things this way. But however, you still have the objective, the customer, the product, the master plan, the decision you have to take on uh, the short-term plan, the KPI, and the PDC. Does it work? Incredibly, yes. I'd like to give you an example. So this is my eighth story. This is an obey of product development. So this one was quite a huge project. You know, it's 100,000 main days in less than two years. So it means a lot of people, let's say 60, 70 people in front of you, and they have to provide at the end of this time and precisely for the 31 of December 2017, they have to provide a solution that will take every transaction of the bank, and it's a very large bank in France, calculate on that the risk, consolidate the risk, compare the risk to the funds of uh, Credit Agricole and send the information to the European bank in order to show to that everything about risk is, is under control. This is something that happened after year, years after years, after 2008 and uh, the, the financial crisis. So it was really a huge project with a specific company for the risk calculation, Moody's, a specific supplier to do the development, lots of expertise inside Credit Agricole about, uh, about uh, the, the way they structure their data, their, the way they, they exchange information and so on. And after creating these very large IT teams, what happened was they were not on time. Not on budget is a difficulty for IT, but not on time is something very bad. So they decided to create the Obeya, and here you have people working the Obeya, and you have ways, just on, on the top of the left, you have ways to represent a product, which is a place where you have the data, where you have the calculation, where you have the transfer of the data from one system, 41 system, to one system, and um, right past it on any places where you say, okay, oh my God, this will not work. And working with this Obeya, 16 meters long Obeya, 1,000 of post-it, working with this Obeya, they managed to deliver on time and nearly on budget the project. So something, another place where Lean helps is visual management. But no, a visual management that helps people identifying if the situation is normal or abnormal, and when it's abnormal, helps them launching the right PDCA to succeed. It's not just paper on the wall, nice post-its. It's something that shows problems when they appear. Last story I wanted to tell you about uh, Lean. Lean always starts from the top. He is the CIO, he was the CIO, now he's retired, of a bank called BNL in Italy. And he decided, he was really engaged with his people, and he decided to launch Lean on the field and with his manager. And My after problems. three years, Hence, this is what we try to find the said. best solution together. It's necessary to distinguish between the false and the real problem. We do much more things with less effort. The team became actively involved in the change. Go and see, go and see, go and see. Allow to manage the chaos. Time and people used when necessary. Enable us to optimize our day-to-day -day activities and complete them on time and effectively. We improved our skills in terms of understanding and awareness of our end users' needs have a clear overview of the status of the assets. This approach allows to shorten the project phases. 
The Go and See activities allowed us to involve the end users. Thanks to the workshop, we were able to share the final solution with all the stakeholders, co-designing the application together with the end users. We only do what is really needed, and our colleagues are more motivated, satisfied, and committed. So these people are working in a digital world. There, there is all this digital transaction applications that you see, and there is all the old back offices that you don't see IT back offices that are working to provide the data that would help the interface between the customer and the bank. And what they learn from Lean, go and see listen to your customer, customer satisfaction, five, uh, fight against, uh, against waste, make it visual, and again, I'm thinking of Dan Jones, anytime he tells me, yes, this is just what we are doing in manufacturing. And in the end, I understood that IT, Telecommunication and then digital are very, very young industries. IT started, let's say, 40 years ago. It's not so long. With people with no training in IT, just real geeks, you know, they wanted to play with their computers without any trainings. So then they had no trainings in IT. No, very few universities were teaching anything. But more than that, they had no clue of what management was, except looking at Charlie Chaplin, working with this terrible machine in a film, modern time. And what they created was such a terrorist organization where everything is under the control of the management that and it means that any time you speak about Lean, any time they accept the idea of Steve Jobs that you can rely on your people to build quality and great products, any time you have people who really appreciate to do Lean. Just as a summary, This is a story of Cesar Ghosn. So Cesar Ghosn is the CEO of a company called CNIT, and I thank the, the Lean Institute Brazil because he is Brazilian, and uh, it's the, the way we, we met some years ago. And he was explaining to, to me that uh, Hoshin was a way for him to develop his, his company. And he made Hoshin, and he's still that, but step by step, he had a personal understanding of, of what is in digital. Just to tell that his personal understanding finds satisfied customers because he, the company is increasing in terms of revenue. And this understanding, he says that there are three points you need to manage, to handle. The first one is Lean Leadership Development. <laughs> Second one, Lean Design and Delivery. And the last one is Lean Management System. And you see that only on Lean Design and Delivery, you have these technical tools. So starting Lean with Digital, with your own people, Biogenba, Biogenchigen Butsu, Try to understand what kind of value you are creating or not. Asking, can you show me the life of one demon and what is happening there is maybe the first the two places when you can start your lean discussion with, with your engineers. And remember, software is eating the world. They should know what lean is to eat it well. Thank you.